Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Don Joe number OSLP-107 EBF630. This is a latch guard is what it is. It's basically a heavy piece of stainless steel that has been cut, punched, put in a press break probably, um, into this type of shape to act as a latch protector. Uh, so what's immediately noticeable about this latch protector is that you have this unusually large offset that's here. So that's gonna be atypical, um, but could also be exactly what you need as well. So we'll talk about what that dimension is, and it is in a moment, but you wouldn't use this for a standard hollow metal door and frame or a wood door and a steel frame installation. When you have a typical 332nd of an inch inset, this offset would be far too large and would be there to account for perhaps an electric strike, perhaps applied molding or some sort of frame condition that you needed a greater offset there. Moving through the part number, the 107 will be a reference to the size as well, but they have EBF in the part number, <clears throat> EBF, and that's a reference to these specific bolts uh, they are not the standard bolts because they're EBF bolts and what that means is that they have a very thin profile to the head a thin, a very th uh, they're very thin regarding the thickness of the head and we'll talk about why that's important in a moment and then 630 that means two things it means it's made of stainless and that it has a brushed finish and of course this peel away protective film that's here covers that stainless steel material um, obviously that you remove at the time uh, once one's installation is done so let's take a look at uh, the dimensional properties of this item so it has a three-quarter inch offset and again that's going to be for an application when you require an offset I did for a client not too long ago so they must be calculating the overall and that would certainly um, not exactly makes sense, but I'm thinking they're certainly measuring from the underside of the lip to the worth of what the face of the door would be. That's your three quarter inch, no doubt. This is going to have a height that's going to be seven inch, and that's the seven that's in the part number. This is going to have a very large radius cut here. Um, the template will tell us what that radius is. It's probably about three and a half inch would be my guess. Then has these holes, these square holes punched for those carriage bolts that's there. So where would you use a three quarter inch offset? I was about to say I had a client uh, not too terribly long ago have a garage door out swinging, but what they had was were jam extensions. So if you were to order a four and nine sixteenths or a four and thirteen sixteenths wood door wood frame pre-hung slap that into the wall and then you realize well the wall is five and a half thick okay so what they do is they'll well you have two choices you get a new new frame uh, or you just add jam extensions the problem with that is the door still goes all the way in but now you have artificially uh, increased its inset and the problem with that is you need generally special hardware Raised barrel hinges would be a side effect of jam extensions when you're mounting them on the pull side. Um, an extended lip strike. And then if you were going to account for a latch protector, you need to compensate for that additional thickness. So the client and I discussed, he, had, he really had two choices. He could chisel all of that jam extension, get all of that out of there so the latch guard would close up tight. Repl he did not have a extended lip strike because the latch of the lock was literally just hitting the jam prematurely and that did not bother him. Um, or it was go with a larger, uh, go with an offset on the latch protector that suited the application. And, you know, would I want to be hammering into applied, you know, or to jam extensions? I wouldn't. Um, something's going to probably come loose in that application. Uh, so it was agreed or decided by the client that they would simply get the greater offset. It came back six half dozen the other in the eyes of the client, and I know that it worked out splendidly for the client. Now, let's switch to the screen view where we can take a look at the technical drawing of this and show exactly uh, what that jam extension concept looks like uh, and also what these EBF fasteners are. 
So this is the item that we are looking at, okay? Three-quarter off, uh, offset made from 12-gauge steel. Let's put the caliper on this and see exactly what the caliper says. Caliper says 0 0.105, 0 0.105, at least it does um, with the uh, peel-away paper backer, 12-gauge steel thickness. Point, uh, let's see here now. So 12 gauge is 7 64 it's 1 divided by 64 times 7 is 0 0.109. So yeah, this is pretty darn close. Um, dimensions, I did not take the width, the, uh, the width of this item. I'll put a tape measure on that again, but the dimensions of the item, its overall width is actually closer to about 2 and 3 quarter inch. 630 satin stainless steel. It's available in other base materials and finishes. And sold as each. So let's take a look at the template, and that will give us our dimensional properties. Uh, this is actually closer to 2.75, and they're telling us that it's um, brass plated, chrome plated, dark bronze. That's going to be a so steel, steel possibly steel brass plated over steel chrome plated over steel that will be like a kind of shiny chrome uh, du is a duranotic or a dark bronze powder coat um, stainless or pardon me silver uh, this will be silver uh, color that will be a powder coat i'm going to guess that these are all on steel and then they have the stainless steel base material um, and uh, brushed finish is what I'm driving at. The rest of the dimensional properties that we haven't covered, location of the holes, and that three-quarter inch offset. Okay, that's pretty handy. Now, there's a product catalog, but let's switch over here and talk about, and I can reuse part of this drawing. Yeah, let's do so. So, here's, here's a door, and your standard latch guard is going to be right like that. That's going to work out really great, okay? Big uh, big rosette, lever trim, whole nine yards, everything's good. That works really nice. Uh, your strike is, of course, covered here. Now, what happens in this scenario where we have a jam extension that's been added, okay? That's literally what we're discussing here, except that it's going to be applied material. So now, if you recall, we are looking at the face of the door to the inside face of the return. So provided that the inside face of the return to the face of the door, if this dimension is about 3 quarter, and we'd really like it to be you know, about 11 sixteenths at the most, if that's going to be nominally 3 quarter, this is going to be the perfect unit for you. And again, you know, a strike plate that you're going to have installed is going to need some modification most likely. Okay. That would be common to need to do that. Or, you know, you might just simply have uh, a deep inset. You might have a wood frame where you literally have a deep inset. Okay. Normally, this dimension is about 332nd, but okay, imagine if it was 3 quarter inch. That could happen. You see it in aluminum storefront uh, as well, especially when those doors can be double acting. Well, pardon me. Especially when the hardware is potentially capable of double acting, but you could have aluminum storefront with a little blade stop here. Okay. The door is actually hung in the center of the frame on an overhead center hung closer, if you're familiar with those. And yeah, you need a latch guard. This door only swings out. You need a latch guard that has that large offset. So that could be another reason why you might have that. Okay, so Very typical. Now, those EBF fasteners. We're going to jump to the product catalog and then back to our 
paint program, EBF fasteners, special fasteners, special fasteners to prevent interference with the frame. Available on selected latch guards as an option. And those are, again, in lieu of the standard fasteners. The only difference, really, is that you're going to have an acorn nut on the inside. An acorn nut has a, a very definite uh, thickness to it. Um, I don't know if they show clearly what the standard bolts look like. Yeah, I don't really see it clearly shown, although it's marginally alluded to, this acorn nut idea. So, EBF fasteners, what are those all about? Here's, and quite frankly, I think you need to order them regardless. If you're doing a hollow metal door and frame, absolutely order them. If you're doing anything else, it wouldn't hurt to order them. So here's our door. Okay. Uh, I've already screwed it up. Imagine... Just, you know, okay, let's just, you know, let's just imagine that we're dealing with an extension, okay? Here is our latch guard. All right. And those holes, you know, that bolt, that carriage bolt is going to kind of sit here, right? It's going to come through the door. Your fastener, your acorn nut needs to sit in this area. Therein lies the problem. The conflict between the face of the door and the face of the stop. That dimension is also about 330 seconds, approximately. Okay. An EBF fastener, the thickness of that head of the fastener will allow it to reside right in that space, whereas an acorn nut will not allow it to reside there. So depending on the exact location, you're likely going to need the, um, the EBF fastener, and that's why you're going to use that. Now, uh, looking at our product brochure, let's fire that up again. OSLP-107 EBF, we'll get to the page where this is located, and the table, okay? Two and five eighths by seven, again, closer to two and three quarter will show us, uh, forgive me, I did not talk about that radius on that prep. Um, they don't give us a radius. Oh, here it is, sorry. One point, uh, one and 13 sixteenths is the radius. One and 13 sixteenths. So 1.8125 times two, that's gonna have a rows diameter of three and five eighths. That is going to be appropriate for your large roses on your heavy duty grade one lever sets. Grade two, grade one, they should all have roses that are gonna be about three and five eighths, and that's where you're gonna use that for. Okay, so in the rest of this chart, you can see how the part numbers change as the size changes. So if you wanted to do an OSLP in a uh, larger 10 inch size, you sure, certainly could. OSLP, 210 EBF, uh, pardon me, it would be a 110, forgive me. Uh, what happens here with these, these funny things, you've got 107 uh, and 207, which are the same shape, except the 107 is made of stainless and the 207 is made of steel, therefore you couldn't order a 207 in the 630 finish and vice versa. The 10 inch version, of course, would be the 110 or the 210. Um, you know, don't know if you need a larger version of that. You might want to try to catch a deadbolt inside of there uh, at the top of the unit. However, that template, okay, does nothing, it probably doesn't do much for you in that regard because it's just nothing other than simply longer. Um, doesn't offset that, doesn't bias the hole to one end to give you room for a deadbolt. So that may not be of, uh, it might be exactly what you need or it may not help you at all to have something longer. It may not be of any advantage. Um, those are the finishes that we discussed earlier. 
OSLP is three quarter off offset. The SLP is the three eighths offset. So they have the same item, just simply with a smaller offset. And that can be used to account for an electric strike where you have a standard application that might work quite, uh, quite well for you. As you go through the balance of the document, if you were so disposed or inclined, you'll see the entire realm of latch guards from Don Joe. And if you know the name Don Joe for anything, you would for their latch guards. This is a smart little outside, outswinging uh, angle style that covers up the uh, apparatus nice. This narrow style is nice because it's literally petite. You don't see it on the door much at all. Um, rather than you know bolting on, you know the classic sort of you know hammer answer you know to to the latch protector. Big, long, obvious. You might just need something a little bit more petite to elegantly solve the problem, or. You might want some latch guard on an interior door and you don't want to have a big chunk of metal on there that's two and a half by ten. You might opt for something that's one and a half by six. Just maybe an office door, keep it honest people honest kind of thing. Other variants here, latch guards as they pertain to specific applications, aluminum storefront material. Uh, this would be a specialty item when you have that particular Folger Adams electric strike. That's still out there alive and well. The 310 is the literal battering ram of the Folger Atom line. That 310 strike will, will is, is, you know, well, they're both incredibly common, 310 and 710. Additional variations on latch guards. Okay, I would certainly recommend that you review that. Now, back to the item that we're talking about, what I'd like to point, where, where I would like to point your direction to next would be a link to the manufacturer's page as seen here. So on this page, you're gonna see not only all of the Don Joe products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog, as well as the subsections of their catalog. And again, if you know the name Don Joe at all, you probably do for their latch protectors and their door reinforcing wraparound plates. But as you can see from these other catalog titles, they make a lot more than just latch protectors and wraparound plates. In particular, you'd probably want to take a look at their ladder poles. They have an entire section of ladder poles, some pivots, bolts and latches, door stops, push and pull plates, flat goods, kick plates, armor plates. I have a client who routinely, they build out um, uh, retail spaces that uh, focus on pets and in particular dogs and dog care so they buy a, you know a, several cases of armor plates at one time 34 wide 36 tall uh, and that's because obviously um, you've got clients coming in with their dogs and they don't want the wood doors to get destroyed so they'll throw armor plates on there those all come out of Don Joe they do a great job with that material let's wrap up this video on camera In conclusion, we've gone over what this item is used for. We've gone over its options, why it's used. It's a bit of an unusual derivative of latch guards for that three-quarter offset along with the EBF fasteners. But like I said before, that EBF fastener, that's going to be a no-brainer regardless. Um, let's just take a look at that to archive the thickness of the head of the item as well. And of course, this will be appropriate for a inch and three quarter thick door it's a stainless steel carriage bolt the female portion however is steel based thickness of the head of the bolt 0.1 about 0.115 about 0.115 the thickness of the head the overall length of the female portion, 0 0.796, 0 0.796. Outside diameter of the head, 0 0.648, 0 0.648 outside diameter. And the length of the carriage bolt itself, 1.491, 1.491. Put them both together and that's going to be appropriate for an inch and three quarter thick door. If you have an unusual door thickness, we're going to want to work through that 
with the factory at the time of order. You're not going to want to try, in my opinion, to try what I believe to be a 3 8 stainless steel carriage bolt in an unusual finish, um, in an unusual base material, I should say. Uh, I don't know that Donjo has the ability to provide these bolts for, say, a two and a quarter inch thick door. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they could, and I wouldn't be surprised if they couldn't. Um, so let's avoid the surprise when you get the item and the bolts are too long or too short by specifying that we'll work towards that prior to shipping. Any questions on the Donjo OS LP-107 uh, EBF and a 630 finish or any other Donjo product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.